Hey, Kingsway, thanks so much for joining us this morning. I'm excited uh, that we can be together again online like this, but I would be lying if I wasn't a little sad that we aren't able to be together in person. Listen, we've said from the beginning of this, the start of 2020 when this happened, it was going to take some patience. And I know I'm learning a lot about kindness, patience, and just believing that God is faithful even when my plans, and I know some of your plans, have not worked out. But as we start today's service, and we give you an opportunity to be together, again, one body, one spirit, one church, I want you to just focus your heart and put yourself in a position and a posture of prayer for a moment. Wherever you're at, I would just encourage you to take a second and to ask God to come in and to provide some calm, some peace, and a little bit of space for maybe some learning, growth, and a little bit of clarity in your life. And so this morning, I'll just ask wherever you're at as we start, Maybe it's an out loud prayer that you pause this video. Maybe it's just something that you say softly under your breath. Maybe it's something that you pause this video, go to a place and get on your knees. But ask God to come in and to do his work again, to allow him to bring living, breathing water, living, breathing air, living full life into you and into me. Thanks again for tuning in. We're going to play a few songs here. Let's sing these out loud where we're at together in one body, one spirit, across the waves. <laughs> let's sing these songs out together. Let's worship our God and let's worship our Savior. Let's do that now. When peace like a river attendeth my way When sorrows like sea
And then we want to give you just a few minutes, Kingsway. We know after we've just taken the time to worship and to give God praise, uh, we take time every week to take communion together, to have an opportunity to do what, what Jesus asked us to do, to take a piece of bread and a cup of juice and to remember his body that was broken and his blood that was shed and remember the sacrifice that he made to provide full life for those that would choose to follow him. So wherever you're at in your home, if you have a chance to find a little bit of apple juice or maybe a little bit of Coke or Pepsi or maybe it's just milk or water, grab some liquid, grab a piece of cracker, maybe a piece of pancake, maybe it's just a little bit of cereal, some Cheerios, but pray over it and allow God to remind you of the price that was paid for your full life, the price that was paid of your sins, of your darkness, that light now prevails and that love won and that you have life in him. Take a moment, pause this video, and take communion together right where you're at. Let's do that now. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for an amazing time like this, that we can take communion as one body, one church, one spirit, and we can remember your Son and what he has offered. We take this communion together. We remember his body that was broken, his blood that was shed, and we offer ourselves and our brokenness and our heartache, and our missteps, and we accept his gift of grace and life. And we thank him for that. Lord, it is your name that we pray, and in your son's name, Jesus. Amen. Well, all right, Kingsway, I'm excited to start a new series with you. Uh, this is a series that I've actually been uh, excited to talk about now for a few weeks, and it's something that has just been on the tip of my tongue that I've talked and mentioned to a lot of people that I've been able to talk to on the phone or even some of you that I've been able to see in person, uh, and some that I just have mentioned online or even in the passing uh, with some acquaintances. I just, it's something that I've just, it's resonated with me, and it's just, it's become a rally cry in the back of my heart for the holiday season, for the, for the end of 2020, for kind of the focus of what I feel like I needed. And part of that is because I felt like what was happening was uh, just 2020 was kind of getting the best of me. And it was, it was becoming something that maybe like you, it's, it wasn't like it was just winning. It wasn't like a darkness was, you know, overtaking me, but I just felt a little blue. Uh, I felt like I was a little low. And and I just, everywhere I looked, um, you know, it just felt like uh, the things that I was seeing and the, the people that I was talking to, no one had that, that spark, that joy, that, that kind of enjoyment of life uh, in them. And so when I started recognizing that in myself, I, I, I ran to the words of Jesus. That's normally what I do. I've done that for years now where I, when I don't know what to do, I turn to Jesus. When, I, when I'm not sure what to say or where to go or what the next direction is, I, I think, man, I just need to find and read some Jesus. And it's not that I always agree or that I find easy to, to, to understand what Jesus says, even though I think he's a brilliant teacher. Uh, it's just that those words are, are grounding to me. They, 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 they bring me comfort and they allow me sometimes to, to remind myself of perspective that's important. And it didn't take me very long to find the words that would be the catalyst for this series and will be the words that you will hear every week uh, in this series. Uh, and they were found in Matthew chapter 5. That's in the middle, it's the very beginning and the beginning sections of probably the most famous sermon that Jesus ever preached. It probably was preached more than once, but we have it recorded in full in Matthew chapters 5 through 7. And in that section, actually at the very beginning of Matthew chapter 5, uh, not the very beginning, but in the middle section of chapter 5, Jesus says these words to a crowd of people that are trying to learn what his way of life, what, what the kingdom of God will look like and be like. And he's talking to a group of people that are the lowest of lows. They're struggling to make ends meet. They are following him because he has done miracles and provided food for, for the crowds. He, they're following him because they are looking for solutions and hope. And he has them at, I mean, just on the edge of their seat whenever he stops to teach. And so when he teaches this, 
he is saying it to a group of people that I, that I immediately found myself in, where I, I felt like I was drawn to him again, that I'm sitting and I'm wanting certain things to be said, and, and I'm needing them to be said, and I'm hoping that they'll be said. And then I read these words that I've read tons of times, and you may, you've heard them before, but hear them fresh as I did. Hear them fresh as I did. And they're in Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. And it just says this, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house in the same way. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Oh, in a moment, this was so clarifying for me. In a moment, it was so clarifying for me. But there was an image that immediately stuck to me. Now, of course, go back to just the the verses just before this, in verses 14 and 15. It's verse 15. I have that song that I grew up in the church, you know, hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. And I had that image in my mind, but I'd never thought of it this way. I'd never actually taken and looked at what it would look like to take a light and, and then place it under a bowl. And I started to think about that. I started to think about what would that be like if, if you took a light and you put it under a bowl? What would it be like? And, and I think in my mind I had always thought about it from the exterior point of view, from this point of view. But I started to think about it, what would it be like if you were the light, as this claims? What would happen? What would you feel like if the light inside of this, what would it be like? Well, if, if you're this light that's in the bowl, that light sees no darkness. That light sees no darkness. Uh, that light feels like its work is done, doesn't it? I mean, everything inside this bowl is probably lit up by this teeny little candle. That, that light also, it, it feels like there's no reason to get any brighter, to grow, to move. I mean, its work is finished. Its known world inside this bowl, this light is done. It's, it's accomplished its goal. So it doesn't see any need to grow. It doesn't see, it feels like the world's good. It's all lit up. But the problem with this is, what happens when the bowl comes off, a.k.a. 2020? Man, things change, don't they? When a light is uncovered, I think it sees problems too big for it to solve. At least that's what I felt. When the light is uncovered, it sees problems too big to solve. This little light might look at this big, giant, dark world and say, oh, there's too, too big of problems to solve. It might see suffering too great to comfort. This little light, how can I comfort all the, all the suffering in the world? What would I do? This light may have too many doubts, it has doubts too many to count. It doubts itself. It doubts that maybe it has to, the strength. It has the will. It, it has the proper answers. It doubts itself. And this is where I found myself in this series. This is where I felt like a lot of people were. I felt like this had been a little bit of what had happened to me, Maybe. Maybe it happened to you. I didn't see a need to grow my faith as much as maybe I needed to. I didn't see the darkness in the world that needed any more light. And I just thought the world around me was maybe a little bit more light than it actually was. And this year has brought up the problems. It's brought up the doubts. And it has proven that suffering is great in the world. But all the clarity of Jesus' words. But we, we must bring the light. It must shine before men, is what it says. And it does so by good deeds. We must bring the light. It's what he is calling us 
to do as his followers. So here's what I did. I started reading a little bit further into this. And so I started to go, okay, so how do we start to do this? How do we, how do we start? And so I was like, I need something to aim at. Like, where, where do I go with this? Like, if there's the problems are too big and the suffering is too great and there's a lot of doubt into what is the church going to look like and what are we going to do moving forward and the clarity that I need just seems to be right outside of the window of my realm of perspective, then how do we start? How do we take our steps? What do we do? And lo and behold, I, I read just a few pages later, a, a chapter later in the same sermon, and Jesus says this, and it, it really came out of this idea. I wanted to aim before I shot. I want us to aim before we shoot. It says this in Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 24. It's something that we've read a lot here in November at Kingsway, talking about stewarding the things that we've been given. Don't store up treasures here on earth where moth and eat them, where moths eat them and rust destroys them, where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. I love how the NLT says that. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. Your eye is a lamp that provides light to your body. It's just saying you see through your eye, but your whole body responds because of what you see. When your eye is good, your body is filled with light. When your eyes are good, you can see. When your eye is bad, your whole body is filled with it. You cannot overcome the bad eyesight with any other part in your body. The light ceases to fulfill and your body suffers is filled with darkness I believe is the next verse in 23 and if the light you think you have is actually darkness how that how deep that darkness is so if you think you see light but it's really darkness man that must be some deep darkness and then to clarify what he's saying is this if you get this one thing wrong it blinds you from the truth And this is crazy. No one can serve two masters. You will hate one or love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. And you think, oh, the devil. No, you cannot serve both God and money. And when I heard that, I was like, ooh, oh, man. I, I know that. I know that's true. But isn't it crazy how in 2020 there is a part of us that the economic consequences of this year and the doubts of what will happen and what will change and looking at what could be undone that has been planned for, saved for, hoped for, even just financially could put and raise this idol of security and hope to be a dollar bill that we would chase after. Oh man, if we just make that our sole aim and we put all our faith and trust in that, he's saying we will miss the thing that's most important. It will blind us from the things we're supposed to do. And when I heard that, I thought, oh, I have to be careful. If I want to bring the light, I'm going to have to do it serving God and aiming for heaven. We're going to bring the light, but we're going to do it by serving God and aiming for heavenly things, things that do not, do not matter on this world. We're not going to cling to the things that would give us security here, that would possibly bring us moments of hope. We're not going to cling to the things that, that bring just momentary peace. We're going to aim for the things that will give greater peace. We're going to We're going to serve the God that gives everlasting peace. We're going to move towards the things that are not of this world to look for our hope and peace. And that's what we have to do when we bring the light. And then if you go even further, because my mind's just racing now as I'm reading through the Sermon on the Mount, and I hope that you'll take the challenge to read through the Sermon on the Mount. There's lots of good things in the Sermon on the Mount. I get to the very end of chapter 7 of Matthew. And it's one of those sections that I know has got another song, Build Your House on the Rock or the Sand. And I I grew up with this section, but it, it struck me again as I read it. 
Matthew 7, verses 24 through 27. This is Jesus concluding his sermon with all the things that he's talked about, including that you are the light of the world, including that you need to put your treasure in Christ, in God, including those two things. He says this, anyone who listens to my teachings, teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the flood waters rise and the wind beats against the house, that it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds his house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. I know when I read this, I knew where the bedrock of this sermon was going to be. I knew what it was going to be. I knew that my heart knew it, and I knew that it was simple gospel, but I knew it was so important for my mind to be reminded. Jesus is the light and the hope of the world. Jesus is the light that brings hope to the world. He is that light. And when he says you and I are the light, it's because we're reflecting him. It's because we are his children, his messengers, his ambassadors. We are showing off what he is doing, what he is all about. And it provides hope to the world, that light does in the darkness. So we are going to stand on that rock, and we're going to bring the light. That's what we're going to do. We're going to stand on the rock, and we're going to bring the light. Now, for some of you, you're like, okay, Trevor, What are you talking about? Okay, I've heard you say this sentence like 40 times. We're going to bring the light, bring the light, bring the light. It's exactly what I said in the first verses of Matthew 5. The good deeds before man are what are going to reveal you and I as being people that don't pursue momentary peace, but pursue a light and a God and a heavenly kingdom that is not of this world. And the way we do that is with our good deeds, with the way we live and choose to live. And at the same time, we're going to knock out what could be an idol in our lives, with something that could have gotten a hold of us. And that is putting our security in what we have, our treasures, our dollar bills. And we're going we're to give it a death blow. We're going to put it underneath the sovereignty. We're going to put our, our faith back on the rock in this series. So what's so cool And what is so fun and what I've been so hopeful for you to get excited about is that we have a plan to do something for the next three weeks that even being online, even with unknown major national things going on, and even with massive pandemics going on, we can still bring the light. We can do this as a church. And that, to me, is joy that can't be stolen when we become the light of Christ and we move it. So here's what we're going to do. And I'm going to stand up for this because I'm just, I'm about jacked out of my mind right now. So we have a plan. If you go right now, if you're watching this, to kingswaymo.com backslash bring the light. kingswaymo.com backslash bring the light. It will have all the details that I'm talking about. You go this right now on your phone or on your computer and it'll bring this up. But I'm going to challenge you. We have an action plan. This isn't all the options to bring the light, but I want to give you some legitimate options you can get your hands on to do this as a family, to do this as a follower of Christ, to do this and bring some light to the people around you. So here's some options. Here's some things that you can do to let your good deeds shine, to slay the idol that could be stealing the treasures and desires of your heart and to put them back on the bedrock of Jesus. Are you ready? Bring the light action plan. Here's one option that you have. There's a diaper pantry in town at the First Presbyterian Church. They need diapers. We can provide some diapers. All you're going to do, any size, you're going to go in there, you're going to buy extra diapers, you're going to buy some, you might not buy diapers in years, you might go in there and see how expensive they are and buy two packs because you didn't realize you needed to. That, you may do that. You may go in there and buy one of each size. And then you're just going to come and you're just going to throw it underneath the awning here at the church. Just put it underneath there. Get as close to the door. I'm going to be watching for it. We're going to have other people looking for it. We're going to pull it into the building and we're going to take those and we're going to give them to the diaper pantry in town. 
And we're going to bless some families that just need something as simple as diapers during the holiday season. You want, nothing, you want something else? Here's another option. You ready? There are two different homeless ministries in Springfield that are doing incredible work. I've, I've experienced both of these in small ways, and I have a personal connection to one of them that I've loved being able to have conversations with. Victory Mission is a men's, uh, it's basically a men's halfway slash homeless shelter in Springfield. They do incredible work to help men get off the streets. COVID has caused so many complications in their process. They have difficulty. The Connecting Grounds is actually a church that has made homeless ministry their number one priority. They have a distribution center. They have homeless uh, ministries that go out almost every Friday night. And they do all kinds of incredible interpersonal work with these people that are on the streets to try to help get them the things that they need. Both of these ministries have donation lists. Here's the donation list if you want to be a part of it. There's also ways that you can go to these websites and serve and go up there and help one-on-one -on -one if you'd be interested in doing that. But here's a list of donations that you and I can do. You just, you just pick up some lightly used or, or gently used or new clothing, and you, you pick up some perish, perishable foods, non-perishable foods, some staple items, hygiene, blankets, and tarps, and you just drop it off. Just put it underneath the awning over here and say, go, get this to where it needs to go. Let this be something that would shine the light of Jesus. That's all it is. You just take this. And again, kingswaymo.com backslash bring the light. All the details are here with these links to this stuff. You want something else? Maybe you sound like, hey, Trevor, give me something else. What, what about something else? Here's another option. You ready? What about this one? The Maurice and Erica White, who have been here multiple times. If you were here last year, we built a church for them in Kenya. It was really exciting. Here's that church that we did. We brought the light. There it is so cool. Here's the pastor and his wife. They were so excited. Maurice and Erica were telling me. They were just jazzed. Now, now Erica called me a few weeks ago, and she says, you guys going to do it again? You said, I, you better believe we're going to do it again. Yeah, we're going to try. So here it is. We have, a, we have a, a need for a $400 PA system. I was talking to Tim Snyder about this. It's so cool. It's a backpack PA system. They get to take with them. It's solar charged. They literally can walk into any church and take it anywhere they go, on the road, under a tree, or even in a building, and they're in need of that. And then if we want to build another church, $3,400. That's what it would take. And all you got to do is you go right here to our giving site, and there's a drop-down menu for it. This is an African church fund. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to raise enough money to bring some more light. Bring some more light. And of course, we have something going on that actually is supposed to end today that we're giving kind of a two-day extension to. That's Operation Christmas Child. Operation Christmas Child is something that I know we've been a part of for years and years and years. And it's one of those things that I, I, I'm telling you for $25 or $30 to make a box there's no greater impact to see that go to a local church that then is going to make a local connection with a family to provide a Christmas gift to a kid that maybe for the first time will get to see the light of Christ through a small gift. You can still give those. All you got to do is make it and then drop it off by the church by Tuesday. Just shove it under the awning. We'll get it to where it needs to go. Again, that awning may fill up, and I'll be so excited if it does fill up. The last thing that I want to tell you that I did, we actually, I don't even think made a slide for it because it's something that we're scrambling to make sure happens. Holiday Central is going on in our own town, in our small little town. And we actually have a tree in our lobby that was supposed to be for people to come and grab uh, these kids that need sponsoring. We have 20 kids that need sponsoring, that need clothing for Christmas. They're kids that that are in low-income housing, that need just a little bit of extra help, a little bit of extra help in their families. That information is still at kingswaymo.com backslash bring the light. Put that up here one more time. kingswaymo.com backslash bring the light. If you want to know more about Holiday Central and who to contact and how to get one of those and sponsor a kid to make sure that kid gets the clothing that they need, those are due by December 3rd. So there's just a few weeks to make those happen. So you can understand why I was so excited. I mean, there's so many things here that I'm just like, oh my gosh, we have ministries as simple as diapers to things to building a church so that a group of people that can be together. And the, Eric and Maurice, they're waiting for churches over there. They have groups of people that are meeting under trees that are waiting for a building and a place that they can call their church, their home. 
Now, like I said, it's as simple as taking Jesus at his word. You are the light of the world. You are not meant to be under a bucket. You are meant to shine, even when the problems are big, even when the world seems to be suffering, even when you have your own doubts. Let's not cover up. Let's not hide. Let's not cower. Let's bring the light. Let's see what we can do as a church. Make sure you guys go check that out. I'm excited to be able to tell you what we're going to be able to do just in the first week. But we have three weeks of this to see what we can do and the impact we can have. Thanks so much for tuning in this morning. You have a great and glorious day in the Lord. Go bring some light. We'll see you later.